Welcome to Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaborative effort by the U.S. Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, as well as the Veteran Business Outreach Center of the Pacific to showcase stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. I'm Dennis Wong from the Hawaii Small Business Development Center. And today, I'd like to welcome my guest, Dustin Denise from Texas, Hawaii. Welcome, Dustin. How's it going, Dennis? Thanks a lot for having me here. Great, and thanks for coming to be a guest. And you and I, have we've been to many workshops together and a lot of startups and where businesses, they have a lot of questions as far as um, how to start the business, the regulatory compliances, what they need to do, what they want to stay away from not doing. Mm -hmm. And so I thought that the area of expertise and your business as the owner, uh, co-owner of Nexus Hawaii can provide valuable information to the people that are watching this segment of program. Yeah. 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 Can, right can, on. Looking forward to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dustin. And can you tell me a little bit about who Dustin Denise is and um, how you started your professional career? Okay, well, um, I started in insurance, um, working with the Fortune 200 company here uh, uh, locally. Uh, we had our, our branch out here locally. Uh, our, our insurance, though, that we, we work with was primarily business to business. So I did a lot of employee benefit stuff. Um, with that, it got me the kind of the experience of working with companies. So working directly with businesses. Uh, we worked with over a couple thousand companies here in the state of Hawaii. Um, and I got a chance to kind of really know the aches and the pains, um, see what was working and what wasn't working for certain businesses uh, when you are working with that many companies, uh, those, that many different clients. So um, I had an opportunity really to be able to some, take some of the best practices, I think, from some of those businesses that were doing well uh, and be able to kind of bring some of those resources to some of um, other companies in Hawaii. I, I believe that, um, you know, Businesses in Hawaii are, are really the backbone of, of our community. Um, it's something that, you know, if I can help companies to, to grow and to thrive, um, then, you know, the employees that work for those companies as well grow and thrive, and the community does well. Um, so, you know, that's kind of why I started the company uh, with Nexus Hawaii. So. Well, what inspired you to start your uh, own business? I think I was, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, bred into it. <laughs> um, I, I, my dad, actually, he owned a, a produce distribution company in the state of Hawaii. Uh, on, 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 I'm sorry, on the island of Hawaii. Uh, I'm from the Big Island originally, so uh, we got a chance to work with a lot of the farmers, really you know, small businesses uh, who are you know, just trying to make ends meet. And, and, and I think that uh, that was a really great start. Uh, my mom also, too, owns a small daycare center. Um, so you have that entrepreneurship <laughs> going through your blood, huh? Yeah, yeah, I do, you know, and I've I, I seen a lot of the, the stresses and the struggle that my own family went, went through, you know, so um, anything I can do to kind of provide relief, I think, uh, was something that was, was, was great, I think, you know, it, when looking at, at starting another business. So. Well, why don't you tell us what does Nexus Hawaii do? What kind of services do you offer? So yeah, Nexus, um, we do everything from your payroll to your HR. Uh, we can do entity setups. So we do, um, you know, whether it's going to be your LLC or S-Corp setup. Um, we can do your, um, you know, all lines of insurance, workers' comp, TDI, general liability, um, major medical insurance. Sort of like a one-stop shop. Huh? One-stop shop, exactly. And so, is this common, uh, cumulative of what you learn? to going through all the other businesses in the past and what you've done, did that form the idea in your mind? Correct, yes. Yeah, so I mean, you know, um, exactly what I said earlier is, you know, like as I got a chance to see some of the best practices and what other companies were doing right, um, not only on the, you know, uh, on the HR and insurance side, you know, but on, you know, management and leadership side as well as culture, um, these were all things that, you know, I, I love to work with businesses on and, um, and, and, and you know, see how, uh, how that business can be most, most successful. What are some, when your clients come to see you, especially for the first time or first few times, what is the common questions that they have regarding to 
um, seeking assistance in uh, payroll services or um, HR issues or insurance. Can you give us an idea? Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of all over the place because you have um, you know, some businesses who are, uh, who, who are just starting up, kind of in the infancy stage of their business. So they have no idea where to start. <laughs> you know? So you know, we, we can guide, we, we kind of have that conversation from the, the, pro, from the beginning of what entity should I start with? Uh, you know, where, um, uh, what necessary requirements are they gonna be needing? So you know, workers comp, TDI, mm -hmm. um, you know, their Department of Labor number, you know, if they're going to be um, getting employees or not, you know, we're going to need their FEIN number, um, choosing a location, a uh, website, you know, there's, there's a lot of different conversations that we have. I, I, uh, one of the last people I met through your, um, your um, you know, through the workshop that we did, we were actually talking about what areas they wanted to, um, to put their, 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 their shop in, um, and then talking about, you know, um, you know, what uh, the requirements would potentially be for um, different spaces and those types of things as well, too. So it's, it, that's one side of the conversation. On the other side of it, you know, you have those businesses who um, are a little bit more seasoned, um, who have, um, you know, they already have a payroll going. Maybe they're doing it themselves off of QuickBooks. Um, you know, they're wearing multiple hats, so they're, they're, they're trying to balance HR, mm -hmm. hiring and reprimanding and firing and, um, you know, um, sourcing out their insurances and all those other things. Um, and then, you know, they're just really looking for a way to be able to, um, you know, add more time back on their plate, take some time off of their plate, um, <laughs> and really focus in on those areas of their business that they need to, that they know that they need to focus in on to, to make it grow and to make it work. Um, so that's a really fun conversation to have as well because, uh, we get a chance to dive deeper into it, really understand what type of goals uh, they, they, they have and what are some of their previous challenges. And then we can, you know, try to plug some of those gaps and, and, and build some bridges. So. Can you give us some helpful um, instructions or guidance as far as businesses when they're starting out and they're hiring employees? What must they do regarding to the state and federal reporting or as far as um, medical insurance, temporary disability, and work, work cures comp. Okay, so um, I think, you know, so, okay, so on the, um, to, to, to start up, first off, um, like I mentioned, you're gonna need your um, FEIN number, so you need your uh, federal identification number, you need your Department of Labor number, um, you'd also need your state withholdings number. Um, uh, those are the required kind of like uh, things you need to, to set up. Um, then on the insurances side, you would also need your uh, workers comp, uh, your general, I mean, if you're going to be having a location and what have you, you're probably going to get a general liability policy. Um, you need your TDI um, as well. Both your workers comp and your TDI is going to be, um, the way that they rate that is just going to be a percentage of your payroll. So I think a lot of businesses start, starting early on, they're kind of afraid, okay, I'm going to have to pay this workers comp and this TDI insurance, but if you don't have a huge payroll, then it's, you know, it, it, it might not necessarily be as, as, as big as you're imagining it to be uh, because it is a, a percentage of payroll that um, is being charged. Uh, that, that's kind of how the premium works out. Um, one thing you're going to want to look at too is your major medical. So if you have full time employees, um, you're going to want to, uh, you're going to be responsible for taking care of their major medical insurance. Um, so something like your Kaiser or HMSA or HMAA or UHA. Um, those, uh, for your major medical, there's only a small amount of, uh, of cost that you can shift onto the employee. Um, so the majority of that, the brunt of that cost is, is on the employer. Um, so, you know, those are things that we want to kind of work through and, and mm -hmm. then talk about uh, with that employer to really make sure that they understand it and then how can we, um, you know, make the best choices possible, you know, because you also, at the end of the day, you want to take care of your employees yes. because your employees are, you know, the heart of that business, right? And that those are um, really, uh, those are key assets to making your business thrive. And, and I think here in Hawaii, especially, you know, um, you know, they're like family to us, especially in a small mm -hmm. business. And that's one mm -hmm. of the things I love about it. Um, so you want to take care of your employees. On the other side, you know that you have minimal budget or you have a certain budget that you need to work with. 
So you know, really uh, balancing those things out, I think, is um, is a is, is a big conversation that we have a lot of times in the beginning. Um, and, and it, but I think a lot of times when you walk away from that conversation, um, employees feel employers feel a lot more relieved because <laughs> they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know all of these things, and and uh, and, and now I do, and um, it wasn't as 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 bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, and, 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 and now they have a clear path, you know, to, to how to get to where they need to get to. So. Well, there's so many compliance issues, regulatory or licensing issues and all that. There's a lot to put together. Yeah. What about when it comes to HR, human resources issues, when it comes to what they generally, common questions they ask, like overtime, breaks and meals, holidays, vacation at will? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, overtime... Uh, uh, over time, you're going to be looking at, uh, you know, it's going to be weekly. So 40 or more hours per week uh, would constitute overtime uh, for an employer, uh, for an employee, I should say. Um, as far as um, breaks um, and um, vacation and holiday, uh, those things aren't mandatory. So they're not required by the state of Hawaii. Um, but again, looking at the overall health of your business, the culture, uh, within within your organization, um, those are discussions that um, you know I, I, I like to have with that employer because you know you might your 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 budget might be limited at a certain point, but you know to have a conversation and say, hey, this is what our goals are. We want to be able to take care <laughs> of our employees and provide them you know all of this vacation and all of this um, you know these these benefits. Uh, but if you start from the get-go and you run yourself into the ground and then now you're out of business and the employee doesn't have a job uh, come six months from now, then you're not doing anybody any favors. Uh, but if you can, have, um, you can have that conversation with your employee and say, hey, you know, we're in the startup phase right now. Um, this is what we're looking to get to. You know, we're going to be able to offer you this and this and this later on down the line. Um, I think that, you know, employees, sometimes they feel like you're included. They know what uh, the end goal is, and at the same time, too, you might, you know, it, it, for the business owner, they can uh, kind of visualize where. You know, so where those are milestones or goals that is kind of like implemented through the process. Correct, yes. I see. What about, um, I believe this is a common question that people would ask, that how do I decide whether I should do it for myself, or have my own payroll? as far as HR department, or should I, should I outsource that? You know, how do I decide and make those decisions? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, first off, <laughs> I think to do it yourself, um, you know, I, I think a lot of times, and that was one of the faults I think I, I started with when I started uh, one of my first companies, it was um, doing everything myself and thinking that I was saving money. Uh, really, I think your time is one of your, your biggest, you know, assets. Um, and, you know, you want to kind of weigh out how much time it's going to take you. Uh, and not only the time it's going to take you, but um, well, the time it's going to take you to learn that thing that you're going to be needing to do and then to be able to learn to do it well and then be able to do it. So there's time, you know, stacked on time. Um, and at the same time, too, you know, so if you're looking at doing it, Yourself, that's one thing you want to want to look at is what is it going to be taking away from my business? So am I going to be taking away, you know, 10 hours from my business a week that I'm going to be able to, um, you know, do marketing that's going to, you know, and a marketing contract would equal this amount of future revenue for my business. Um, or, you know, um, if you're looking at bringing it in house, you know, am I going to be able to uh, afford to hire someone for 50 thousand or sixty thousand pay benefits and have this you know uh, vacation and all that other kind of stuff um, oh, yeah. thanks for that information you know we're heading to a break now and uh, there's a lot of things that we can discuss and cover coming up in the next segment thank you Dustin. Very good. thanks aloha and mabuhai my name is emmy ortega anderson inviting you to join us every tuesday here on pinoy power hawaii with think tech hawaii we come to your home at 12 noon every tuesday we invite you to uh, listen watch uh, for our mission of empowerment we aim to enrich enlighten educate entertain and we hope to empower again 
Maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so much. So much. Thank you, Dustin, for joining us in today's segment. And I want to go back to that issue that we just were talking about, whether you should, um, how businesses um, decide whether they should do it on their own mm. or whether they should contract that out as far as payroll and HR okay. issues. Yeah, so um, like I was saying before, the, um, you know, having to go out and hire somebody, um, you know, figuring out what that salary is gonna look like, fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, um, and then adding on benefits on top of that, um, you know, if your company is gonna be able to afford that, um, or if it's you know more feasible to outsource that. I think a, a big trend nowadays has been outsourcing it because uh, it's proven to be a lot more efficient, I think, for uh, for businesses to be able to do. Uh, another thing too is that you gotta worry about is maybe you know, um, with that employee, um, that, that HR person, maybe, um, you know, turnover as well, too. So say they decide to move to another company, now you have to go through the process of hiring again and of searching for a new uh, mm -hmm. HR uh, mm -hmm. director, mm -hmm. hiring and, and, um, and, and, and onboarding and training and everything else. So, um, you know, those are things that can, can affect the business. Um, I think every company has um, their own goals and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something that, you know, you could definitely explore, I think, more. But you just kind of want to look at those two key factors, I think, whether it's going to be time uh, or it's going to be money, right? So if you're doing it yourself on the time side or um, if you're going to be doing it in-house, uh, what that's going to cost you monetarily um, as well as your turnover issues. As you know, I work with a lot of businesses, and um, whenever we talk about employee or human resources issue, the big concern is retention. Mm. You know, and job retention, and if you lose an employee, you have to be hired, then you have to get the uh, right employee fit, and you got to uh, go to all the expenditures of getting that person back to where the previous person was. Yeah. Now, as far as retention, do you know, as far as nationwide or locally down here, as far as um, what is the trend of outsourcing? You said that it, there is an increasing trend to it, and is there retention? Is do you know if uh, employees are being um, do they stay at the employer less time or more likely to move? Or? Yeah, I mean that's that's that is one of those things. Is that you know employees are uh, especially with um, you know millennials and and this kind of this new generation that are coming up. Uh, the trend is that they're less like they're they're staying at companies less. Uh, at, they're not staying at a company as long as they used to. Um, so, you know, that means that a company needs to be, um, you know, a little bit more on it in regards to attraction and retention pieces for that business. So culture has become very important, I think, for uh, retention, um, you know, making sure that it's, a, it's an environment that um, the employees are feeling challenged, that they're feeling that they're, um, that they're needed and they're wanted and they're appreciated. Um, on the other side of it, there's also going to be, um, you know, benefits. Um, I think it's a, it's a big one. So um, whether it be their major medical benefits, there's also uh, a lot of our companies that we're working with are offering um, different supplemental types of benefits that um, really doesn't cost uh, physical dollars for that business, but is able to really expand the suite of benefits for uh, the employees. So the employees can participate with more things. We take advantage of certain tax programs as well too that uh, allows us to uh, reduce the taxable payroll for these businesses as well. So it, there's so kind of a win-win situation uh, with some of the employee benefits that we can that that, that we've had conversations about uh, with employers. Um, but I think that retention piece is, is extremely important because 
one of your biggest costs is um, when an employee leaves, having to uh, rehire, uh, retrain, uh, and then you know integrate them back into you know integrate them into your workforce. So. As a business advisor, I often come across where uh, my clients, when they first start up a business, they try to decide what type of entity they want to become. And so generally they choose a limited liability company or corporation mm. because it basically limits the liability to them personally. But then on the other side, um, I find that they don't pay enough attention <laughs> to um, following, you know, paying the taxes on time or having the internal system from an accounting to payroll that, that's solid in there besides generating, doing your business and dealing with the customers and you have to in, have the inside and outside. Uh, what type of personal liabilities do people face if they don't pay their taxes on time? <laughs> well, how does that work? Yeah, so that, um, that is going to affect you definitely personally. Uh, I mean, uh, um, a limited liability company isn't an end-all be-all. So, you know, there are things that, um, that you are personally liable for. So if, you know, you aren't, um, you know, doing your filings and you aren't uh, paying your taxes on time, you aren't uh, kind of up to date with that, then, you know, you want to, um, you know, and that's, I think, one of the things that, um, I, I also too we've where we've had I think a lot of conversations to kind of go back to where some of the conversations we had with our clients um, is that they've had issues with you know keeping in compliance with things and they haven't been on time with certain things so they got hit with fines and penalties um, and you know that's where you know as a new business you know you have that luxury of of, of starting everything nice and fresh and from uh, the right way. Uh, versus, you know, having to go back and clean things up later on. And that's more expensive. <laughs> yeah, and, that's always going to cost you more money. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as much as possible, um, you know, doing things, um, you know, the right way from the beginning, you know, and, and, and having as much, uh, tapping into as many of those resources as possible, I think is, 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 is always a good place to start for a business. What, what about you personally now? When you started your own business, what resources did you have or what helped you to get off the ground and uh, are there things that you did right and maybe some things not so right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, there's uh, a number of things I, I did not so right. Um, I think that I was uh, very uh, overly optimistic, I think, on the, the, the time that I, uh, I could devote into doing things like payroll and um, and, and, and handling things that actually should have been uh, handled by somebody else, whether it be in outsourcing or hiring somebody else to do it internally. Um, and, and yeah, and it, and it slowed the growth of my company. It, 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 it definitely, um, you know, those were all learning experiences though. Um, I, I look at everything as, you know, there's, everything happens for a reason. So um, that also too led me into the space I'm in today to be able to help other companies from, um, you know, Kind of avoiding those obstacles. So. What, as far as advisors, we it's it's practically impossible for us to know and do everything ourselves. And um, if you were to suggest or advise to a client, what are the key type of people that they should have on their team, like lawyers, accountants, or what is your point of view? Yeah, uh, definitely a good lawyer, uh, accountant, bookkeeper, um, an insurance person, right? So you want an insurance broker. Um, I think as, uh, you know, and uh, someone who can help guide you through, I mean, if you can get a good business consultant, I think the, you guys do a great job uh, over there at the SBDC. Thank so, you, you know, um, I think those resources are, are extremely important to be able to, for, for businesses to re reach out to, you know, because, um, you don't know what you don't know. And, I, and a lot of uh, this stuff, they don't teach you in school. So you just, you know, got to go out and, and, and to the right places to, to figure out where you're going to get it from. So, you know, it's one of the areas I love to help in. And, and I think that's kind of one of the areas you love to help in as well, too. So. Yeah, we're both business consultants. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, as far as when 
should their um, HR manual or things be updated? How frequently do you suggest in those areas? And uh, as far as um, what attention must they do periodically in compliance <clears throat> areas? Yeah, so I mean, uh, first off, uh, I want to say that <clears throat> if you don't have an HR, like an employee handbook set up, and I, I run into this all the time where a lot of small businesses don't have an HR hand, uh, employee handbook set up, um, so it just makes it very difficult to reprimand an employee. It makes it very difficult to, um, you know, to, to do any type of employee correction as well as, um, you know, let alone, you know, let go of an employee as well. Um, and it opens up a lot of liability as well for that, uh, for that business uh, because you don't have any written, stated, uh, you know, guidelines for that employee. So, you know, an employee can say, well, yeah, you know, you could say that I, I told you to wear non-slip shoes, but mm -hmm. um, the employee, you know, says, well, I don't remember that. You didn't tell me that. And they're not wearing non-slip shoes and they get hurt. You know, now, you know, that, that just becomes a, another issue in itself. Um, so, you know, I would look at first off setting up a good employee handbook. Uh, and then part two of that is, you know, you can revisit that. We can revisit that, you know, every year or so. Um, you know, we can look back at some of the uh, some of the previous challenges that have been been going on. And there's there's also things regulatory that's going on um, in, in in government locally and, and nationally that uh, are, are challenges that are happening on a national level that uh, you know we can kind of key in on and then maybe add into into an employee handbook. So things like social media, right? Social media wasn't a big issue. Um, you know, five, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. nowadays it's become an issue. So, you know, uh, we've started looking at building that into, we've, we've actually looked at, we've, we're, 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 we've built that um, into our employee handbooks for, for the majority of the companies that we're working with. So, Yes, and plus there's all different type of issues there when you're dealing with employees, you know, as far as conduct, dress, as far as even in the use yeah. of, yes, and uh, Fair treatment of people, yep. and you're also looking at the technology too. That's another issue that you know, that in technology, when it's used in the right way, it's uh, very beneficial. But when it's used incorrectly, it can be very harmful as well. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Well, you know, we just have a few seconds left, and I wanted to wrap this up by uh, thanking you, Dustin, for joining our program Pleasure today, point. and. Um, information that you gave us is very valuable and I hope that this will give some important information to people when they're trying to decide when they start up their business or when they make, when their business grows, uh, what decisions do they make to be the most efficient and effective. Thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks a lot. Thanks, Dennis. Appreciate it.